I'm sure most of us here have experienced last minute curveball during a shoot, even coming from the client. Well, today I'll take you through a unique scenario where we had to quickly change our original setup and use a white wall as the background for a series of interviews. We have done all the preparation with the client and their ad agency, the pre-production calls, scheduling, and discussion about potential filming location. However, after setting up at the client's headquarters for a day of filming interviews, we were informed of an upcoming rebrand and the location that the client picked was no longer in compliance with the new brand. In fact, since the rebrand hadn't even happened yet, marketing decided we should shoot on the plain white walls. Well, with a tight schedule and executives arriving soon for their interviews, we had to move our setup to the corner of a room where a small section of the walls was still white and without any visible branding. We decided to try to create a white gradient background, aiming for a brighter spot directly behind the subject's head with a gradual fall off, just to add a little texture. We turned off all the lights in the conference room and positioned the light panel on the floor, hanging it upwards towards the wall. We carefully placed the light so that the brightest point would be directly behind where the subject's head would be. Typically, we expose for the uncontrollable, such as outdoor lighting or permanent fixture. However, with complete control in this environment, we choose to expose for the bright spot. Using false color on our monitor and monitoring the Rec. 709 LUT, we aim to get the bright spot as close to 100% IRE or pure white as possible. You can see the light yellow on the false color and it indicates that our spotlight is between 85 and 93 IRE. Now in hindsight, we should have pushed the exposure past 100% IRE to achieve a more distinct contrast. Clipping those highlights would have worked great since we're trying to achieve pure white anyway. So now that the exposure is set, we need to set up the key light, but we don't want to adjust any camera settings and mess up our exposure. So using the false color, we increase the intensity of the light until the bright part of the subject's face hit around 70 IRE. That's the very light gray you see on his forehead. The rest of his face on the key side register between 48 and 58 IRE. On the fill side, we sometimes use neg to achieve high contrast or a bounce, and if we need to, an actual light. Now we're actually set up in the corner, so there's another wall right here past these doors, and it's bouncing enough light level that our fill measure between 24 IRE with the bright part around 40 IRE. So we didn't need to add anything on the fill side. We also used a backlight just to outline the subject's hair and shoulders. We filmed six or seven people this way, adjusting the floor light's placement according to each person's height just to make sure that the light was positioned right behind them. We also adjusted the key light intensity for each person's skin tone. Now, although I think we could have increased the brightness of the spot slightly, the setup provided enough separation for any adjustment in post-production. Now, this experience is a reminder of how, even in challenging situations, relying on your expertise and creativity can provide effective solutions for your clients. Now, thank you for watching this video until the end. As a token of my appreciation, I'd like to offer you my free camera setting cheat sheet. Just follow the link below to download the free cheat sheet. Thanks again, and happy filming.